The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandal and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up. It's directed at those who have fallen through the cracks, and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. Welcome to Speak Up. Uh, my name is Kevin Avard. I'm the host, and I'm joined today with Dr. Sue Kornbluth. And uh, welcome back to the show. How are Thank you? Thank you for having me back again. Well, I'm glad to be back. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you, we, a lot's happened since uh, we've had you on. Uh, and it, it's actually only been a very short period of time. Um, and uh, I wanted to get people to, to get a, another glimpse at you and, and have another discussion. Ask you some of the things that you're working on. And... Uh, some of my discoveries is, is as, I'm, as I'm posting some of these interviews around the country, we're getting some feedback. And there seems to be an epidemic out there. Yeah, I'm, I, since I was on your show, I must have been contacted by over 100, 100 people. Right. Um, saying thank, thank you that you're out there doing something about this. We never knew that there were people out there that understood what we were going through and that could really help us and guide us along this horrible journey that many parents are going through, both fathers and mothers. But, you know, the ones that are getting hurt the most, Kevin, are the children in this um, alienating uh, parental process. Right. Well, you're here you're from people from California to, uh, now you're in Pennsylvania, correct? I am. I'm right outside of Philadelphia. Philadelphia. And uh, you, you must be hearing from a lot of people because it, it's going, I, I don't know if it borrows the word, but it's, there, there are a lot of people that have been hurt through parental alienation. Absolutely. I mean, I, since your show, I've picked up four clients that I'm working with. One mm. in Alabama, New York City, California, um, Las Vegas. Las so Vegas. it's happening all over the country and, and all over the world. I mean, I hear from people in uh, United Kingdom a lot as well. Right. And we're hearing from people from Australia, believe it or not. Um, again, uh, let's give a little background who you are and what you're doing just uh, for the people that are joining us for the first time. Uh, you're Dr. Sue Kornbluth? Yeah, I'm Dr. Sue Kornbluth. I am a clinical psychologist. I am also a professor of psychology at Temple University and a national expert in foster care, child abuse, and um, parenting. I uh, also am a contributor to NBC 10 here in Philadelphia as their mental health expert. But, you know, my, my true passion in life is really to empower parents to be the best role models that they can be for their children. And so I began years ago working, um, doing custody evaluations. Mm -hmm. And I was in the courts and I was watching what was going on within the court system. And I was getting very angry that many children were being removed from their protective parents and being put with their abusive parents. And I could not understand why this is happening. So I've really made it my life's passion to help these people um, mothers or fathers that are really trying to protect their children from uh, an alienating parent. And that's what I do now. And I offer counseling and coaching and empowerment classes to help mothers and fathers build up their strength to rebond with their children again, 
and to heal relationships that have been destroyed. Right. And, and uh, just letting you know, I, I've seen uh, on Facebook, uh, I actually forwarded one to you. I, I, was, I felt helpless. I didn't know what to do at this point, yeah. only because uh, we're getting them left and right, left and right. And when they're out of state, it's harder for me to get involved. But if I can direct people to certain uh, areas, either you or, or Ron and uh, Sherry Palmer, if, if they're pre, if they're going through the system, or if they're past it and they've, they've, they've had a long history of alienation, there's a lot of healing that needs to go on there. Uh, it, it's, it, and I, you know, I can't do it from where I'm, I'm at. Right, and I'm so glad that you used the word healing because that's really where the work needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, I think that the term alienation or parent alienation is used differently by many different people. And, and at, people have different opinions about it. That's something that I learned, actually, through my page on uh, Facebook, Parenting Beyond Trauma, because that's a whole page that has been designated to my work with, the, with um, divorced parents. I call it spiteful parenting, and let me tell you why I call it this. I call it this because I believe that post-divorce, after the divorce is over, that one parent is still trying to hurt the other parent because of the issues that are between the parents and they're using a child, their own child, as the pawn or the tool to do this. Right. Now, the child becomes what I call the alienated child. But let's be clear on this, the alienated child is a child who prior to the divorce had a very good relationship with the protective parent or the targeted parent now. And now, because they are living with one parent or they're having visitations with one parent and is trying to hurt the other parent, the child now becomes enmeshed with one parent, which is the alienating parent, Right. and starts being cruel to the protective parent. That's what an alienated child is. I had a uh, discussion with, uh, briefly with somebody from California, and they were, they were kind of up in arms about the, the definition of parental alienation. And she basically and just said, well, th th this is a, a, a dangerous term because what, what it'll happen is it, it'll, uh, it'll increase domestic violence. And I... I was a little taken back by that, but I was thinking, well, I, I don't think she was comprehending what, what we're really talking about. Uh, and we, we know that there's domestic violence out there, and it's unacceptable. It, yes. it needs to be addressed, but that's not what this is doing. This isn't uh, facilitating domestic violence. It's just the opposite. Well, it, it's not facilitating domestic violence, but I see where the domestic violence um, survivors are coming from because in the courts around the country, oftentimes mothers who are trying to protect their child from the abusive husband, let's say, and it could be the mother as well, but let's just use the husband in this example. The husband is abusing the wife and is abusing the children. And the, the mother who is being abused is telling their child, this is wrong what daddy is doing. That's not alienating your children, Kevin. That's protecting your child right. and showing your child that you're, I shouldn't be hit and you shouldn't be hit. Right. That's, that is abuse. Well, it, what, what happens is now it, it, you see that the pendulum kind of swings way heavy you know, in, 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 in the efforts to protect the mother or the father. Uh, actually, we had a case come before us, and he was the battered. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the, uh, now, now false allegations can be used against the father who's, who's never done anything bad. And that seems to be a growing trend because it seems to work. Well, that is a trend for some people, but not all. I think it's really important that we don't use generalizations because right. everybody's case is different and unique. And that's how I look at helping every person that comes in contact with me. 
I don't have a generic plan right. or coaching program to help every person that's been through parent alienation. I tailor my therapy or counseling with you. So um, what are you working on right now? You've had four cases, new, new cases, uh, but uh, what are some of yeah. the things that you're working on now? Well, a big thing that I'm doing coming up this um, Tuesday is I'm going to be speaking at a rally, mm -hmm. a national rally in front of the White House. I'm one of the keynote speakers, and I'm going to be talking about how to protect our children from abuse from the court system oh. and how to um, help destroyed by the court system. So I'm going to be doing that, and I'm really excited about that. Now, I, I know you've been uh, in, in contact with one of our, our local representatives, Jeff Oligny, here in New Hampshire. Uh, and uh, we're, we're trying yep. to see if we can get you to come here to New Hampshire to maybe talk to a, the Health and Human Services Committee or family, uh, yeah. family in law uh, to give you a perspective. Exactly. And I, I want what I want is the courts to start getting the right training that they need, start understanding that abuse, um, alienation, emotional abuse, you know, trying to brainwash a child against another parent is abuse. Right. I'm not, I am not saying that every time that happens, a child has to be removed from the parent. When there's sexual abuse and anything of that nature, that's a different story. But what I am saying is that we can't place abused children back with abusers. Right. And I think a lot of times the court system is doing that. Uh, talk with me a little bit, if you if you will, about um, foster care. And now, is are you you have to be familiar with the foster care, and there must be abuses have happening there as well. Uh, I would assume. Uh, what is your experience there? What are some of the things that we can learn? Yeah, well, one of the things that we can learn from foster care, and that's another breakdown of the system a lot of times. Right. That, you know, kids are oftentimes um, placed in foster homes that can be abusive as well, and that just re-traumatizes the child. But they can also be placed in wonderful foster homes. The, the key here is that, if, you, if a child is placed into a foster home, that foster parent has to learn about that child's needs. They have to learn to bond with this child. And it's the same thing when we have a case of alienation. When a child is not with their protective parent for times or visits are not kept or things like that, the child is going to have to learn to rebond with the parents. Right. And that is the whole thing that I do all my work on is rebonding and reattachment. Now you have like a coaching plan for that. I mean, obviously each each case is yep. individual. Uh, how do you develop that? You, you uh, I, I yeah, I, I developed my coaching plans on my own based on the cases that I've worked with. So I've gathered a lot of information mm -hmm. directly from parents that have been through this alienating. Um, process and the one thing that I have discovered is that a lot of the parents that are being, um, you know, targeted, um, they go through post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. Right. They go through anxiety. They go through depression because they're separated from the one thing they love the most, which is their children. Right. So I have to start a lot of the counseling right away, dealing with the symptoms. The emotional symptoms that they are suffering from then mm -hmm. yeah go ahead no I, i'm just thinking you know it, it, how do you if, if if your child's been taken away from you you've done them no wrong and uh you're you're you get desperate and and the emotions yes. are running high and you think you're losing your mind <laughs> you 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 think you 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 question your own sanity now wait a minute what just happened to me and and then you you discover this whole new world, and in this, I'm not gonna say conspiracy, but my God, you know what what just happened to me? I, I one day I'm I'm a loving dad or I'm a loving mom, and 
No. It's gone. It's like a death. Now, what would you do? I know what I would do. I'm a mother of two beautiful children. And if one day I woke up and they were not with me anymore, I'd go into a pure panic. I don't know what I would do. And Kevin, that does not mean that I am crazy. Right. That does not mean that I have a mental disorder. That means that I lost my kids and I am grieving and I am panicking. And I think the courts often look at that as, as a mother or a father is mentally unstable. But what they are in, Kevin, is trauma. Right. Some we induced, would all be. Right. In, induced somewhat by the courts, somewhat by the system. Uh, yep. Granted, there's one tearing apart that's happening, and it's traumatic. It's, it's a couple falling apart. It might have been building up or it might have just happened. That in itself is traumatic. But then you have a system which seems to be leaning one way or the other for no rhyme or reason. It just, yeah. It's who you know, how well you're connected or how well you're not yeah. connected. Uh, and then all of a sudden you find yourself on the outs and you have to keep a level head. You, you, if, if you start going into yes. the rage, then that escalates into more bad behavior. And it, it's like uh, burning a witch. You just, that you, you know, you know, in the old days, they used to do some weird stuff to, to prove that you weren't a witch. You know, they cut you out of your tongue. And if you didn't scream. Right, exactly. Right. So it spirals I, out of control. Right. And, and, and you're helping them through this period of time so that yep. you get a, a new footing. Right, and what I want to do is basically, you know, the best thing to do is get help immediately. Mm -hmm. As soon as this happens, as soon as this is beginning to happen, because what I am finding with people that are contacting me is that they have been feeling this for years, the yeah. depression, the anxiety, the fear, and the panic, and no one has been helping them. So it just builds and builds and builds. So what I start to do is start helping them to maintain clear emotional and physical boundaries within themselves right? so that they can monitor their own um, way of being every day and empower themselves to take the right steps to um, help their child and help themselves. And, you know, focusing on getting back at the alienating person, which is the spouse, that's not going to help because that just brings up more chaos and more drama. You have to focus on what is in your control because your control has been taken away from you. Exactly. And that, exactly. Yeah. And that's what, that's what brings on the terror and, uh, oh my God, what's happening and, and, and what is continuing to happen and all these flooded thoughts that run through your head. And, and it breaks you down. We've had recent shootings here in New Hampshire where uh, a father actually took it out on his, on his child uh, and, and, and killed his child. And we had one father actually burn himself on the, on the state courthouse uh, or on, on the courthouse. So that's going from one extreme to another. So you basically help people get a new footing on their ground. Yes. Right. So can you give me an example of how you help people through the process uh, uh, yeah, maybe tell what, what sure. you're working on now. Or... I'm helping a woman right now in Alabama. She um, has been divorced for about four years. She contacted me because she has joined custody with her um, ex-husband, but the ex-husband is not turning over her daughter for the proper visitations that she is supposed to have with her daughter. Okay. And so she has been suffering from post-traumatic stress, depression, and severe anxiety for, like I said, about two to three years. And she contacted me desperate for help. And what I do, Kevin, is I really get to know the person a while before I start in on my counseling. Because I want to make sure that they're really going to be dedicated to the process. And what I explain to them is that what I'm going to do is map out a plan for you. Okay. So her plan, 
her plan is to um, start building up her confidence, working on letting some of the blame go from herself about you know, that she didn't do enough to keep her child, but in all reality, she did everything that she could. Right. I'm, I'm also going to teach her how to rebond with her daughter because she does have phone contact with her daughter and she does have some visits with her, but not the allotted amount that she's supposed to. I'm also working with her attorney okay. down in Alabama. And we are coming up with a plan together to go back to, into court and have the husband actually, um, you know, be held to the agreement that he signed about turning over the daughter. So, see, that is where I do things a lot differently. I work on both sides. Right. I work with lawyers and I work with you, the person that I'm helping to provide you with the best legal counsel and the best therapeutic counsel. Right. Because it goes hand in hand. And, you, you know, I hear from parents all the time, they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on lawyers that couldn't help them. And that's because they were turning to the wrong kind of lawyers to help them. So I guide them to the right attorney to help them with their particular case. And I don't care what state it's in or what state it's in because I will look for attorneys to help them. Now, do you have a network of attorneys that you work with in each state at all? or I, I do, but what I have with me is a legal consultant right? that, that works um, beside me. And we look over all of the cases together that come to us. We put together a whole plan for, for the person, and then they submit that to a lawyer in their state because my legal consultant, we can only do it in Pennsylvania. Okay. And I've been very successful with that because we interview the attorneys and make sure we're on the same page and make the arguments that are appropriate in court. Now, in California, it comes to, to mind that some of these cases don't get heard for six months, eight months. Isn't there a sense of urgency, though, with each case? Uh, well, uh, to, me, to me, there's a sense of urgency with every case because one minute that a parent is not with their child is too long. Right. But the courts do not see it that way. And also, people have to understand that it does take a long process. Mm. Courts do not move as quickly as we would want them to. They have a tremendous amount of cases that they have to hear. And so it is a slow process. However, you have to be prepared along the way for that. Right. And it's really like hurry up and wait. You know, you get everything done and then you still have to wait. And um, court dates get canceled a lot and have to be rescheduled. But during that time, I'm still working with my client, empowering them and helping them through their emotional struggles every day. Now, now do you work directly with the children at any time? Do you ever get the, uh, to here, work with them? Here, yes. Here in Pennsylvania, I do, of course, in right. my practice. But around the country, I do the coaching through Skype. Okay. So that's one great thing, like you and I are doing right now. Right. And that people can get the help from me that they need all around the world, actually. Right. Now, and so I get, I get, you know, messages from people all the time how grateful they are for this. I'm grateful for it because it, by, by us being able to reach out local TV, we can cover the country now. Uh, and, yeah. And, and I think, again, this whole idea of isolation is, is uh, we're breaking the barriers on this because... When people feel as though, oh, is, is there something wrong with me? Why am I the only one that's going through this? Can this be happening? It's happening everywhere. And, and people are talking. Uh, there are all kinds of Facebook yeah. pages. There's all kinds of uh, resources out there. But an actual clinician like yourself uh, are hard to find. Because I think some people are finding yes. that the system is working against them. 
they may get a court ordered psychologist. Well, mm -hmm. that psychologist is working in the interest of the court, not yes. necessarily the I child. Exactly. And I found that too. And that's why I always tell people to contact me. You have a right to get private help. And oftentimes, look, I'm not saying that the help in the courts aren't good, but I often find that private help is different. I know for myself, I spend more time with each person. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in getting to know them and their situation and empowering them to make the right choices. And, you know, I often try to work within people's budgets as well because I know a lot of times that women and men that have been through the court system, they've had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that. I'm not here to rip people off. I'm really here to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I, the difference that I want to make is in protecting our children and helping parents to parent their children in the best way possible. So down the line, kids are not traumatized by all this and getting into all other kinds of issues. Right. Now, you said you're going to be speaking in Washington uh, uh, soon. Uh, yes. On t Tuesday, I'm going to be speaking, um, you know, in front of hundreds of people that have, been, have gone through this. So I'm really excited about that. It's in front of the White House. Uh, well, I, I hope uh, a lot of people will end up being there. Uh, Me too. And I know that Jeff Oligny, again, uh, is is invited you to come mm -hmm. to the, is there a specific date that, that uh, uh, we've nailed down yet for you to come to no, New Hampshire? No, we haven't settled on that. We're still going through it. But, I mean, I, I love to come out and speak up in New Hampshire. And, yeah. you know, n nothing changes in this world if you don't make some noise. Right. So I plan on making a lot of noise about this issue because we have to protect our children from harm, they are our future, and I really do believe that. Right. You know, and if somebody sees uh, our show, if, uh, if they see it via the patch or, or the web, please share this, this information, because yes. if, if it doesn't help you directly, it will help somebody else. Uh, we're find, I'm getting friends, friended every day. People are logging yeah. on, and, and they're, they're watching the show with you or with Linda Gottlieb or, or Kathleen yeah. Gray. We have more and more doctors coming on. And there seems to be a, a cry. And we're trying to let people know their resources. And, and if at times I can float people your way because I can't solve everything, uh, right. but I can point them to and, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, the outpour, sometimes I can't believe how many parents are going through this. It is everywhere, and it is all-consuming. That's how I feel lately. I mean, I Every day I, I get some kind of email or contact. Can, can you help me? Can Look, there, and you know what? There's are no guarantees, but I, I think that I can help in a way that many other professionals can't. You really have to understand the dynamic that is going on between the parents. Right, right. This, yeah, this work isn't for everybody. Right, and, and one of the things that people have to really avoid is, is this whole industry that, that uh, you know, you, you, just because somebody's in the yellow pages and they say they care, right. you've you got to have a little bit more discernment than that. It, it, there's, you've got to do a little research, and, uh, and there yes. are people like, like yourself that, that they're, they're, this is a cause, you know, it, it, because yeah. it's been going on for a long time, at least since the too 60s. Too long. Yeah. It's, it's been going on too long. And, you know, I was asked this the other day on a TV show that I was on, is everybody an expert in everything? And the answer to that is no. Mm -hmm. Please, people, nobody is an expert in everything. You have to do your work in a specific area to be an expert. Right. And that's why I hear from so many people around the country. I've gone to therapists. Some therapists have told um, some of these parents to just give up. What? I say to myself, I would never give up on trying to rebond and be with my child. Uh, you just talk about like, oh my God, really? Somebody's going to say something like that? I, uh, yeah. Uh, you could, I, it, I don't know. I, don't, I couldn't live with myself. And then where do you go from there? Uh, uh, well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, 
I, I don't I don't understand that response. I will never understand that response. My children are the most important things in my life, and I would fight till the end of time if I was separated from them. And I think a lot of parents feel that way out there. Now, you have a Facebook page, but you also have a page for, for your, your services as well. Yes. Um, my Facebook page is Parenting Beyond Trauma, and every week I'm getting about 100 new followers. So thank you, everybody out there. And I'm so glad that my tips are helping so many people. And my website is www.drsuenu.com. Or just go on the internet and look up Dr. Sue Cornbluth. And that's how you can contact me for help, a consultation. I give a free consultation in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then I determine whether or not you and I are a match for each other. Dr. Sue, are there, are there places, do, do, does the library provide Skype? Because I mean, not everybody has Skype, I'm finding. I know. Uh, are there places where uh, they can go to have a private Skype? Do libraries provide this at all? I think, I think libraries may. I also think some colleges do. I know some of my clients that don't have Skype have gone over to a friend's house to use their webcam. Okay. Also, you, you can buy a webcam for $14 and attach it to your computer. It's that inexpensive, so that's that's relatively yeah. cheap. Well, wow, that and also, and also I, I I I do Skype because I like to see the person, but I also will do um, phone um, therapy on the phone as well with people if they cannot use Skype. I've had people drive down to see me from New York City, from um, Boston, from all over to meet with me before we start working together so we can actually get a feel for each other. So I'm really open to, to anything, and I'm just here to make a difference in you and your child's life. Um, if you were going to leave a message to the court system uh, if there, or, or the legislature, what yeah. would you recommend them? What would be like a high priority? How, how would you address them in, in a, uh, uh, hey, you know, if, 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 if everything gets lost in our conversation, I want you legislators to know this. You need to do this. What would that be? Yeah. Legislators need to really look at both sides of the picture. You need to consider the mother's side. You need to consider the father's side. But most of all, you need to protect our children from being further abused. It is not okay. It is not okay to put a child back with an abusive parent without the proper health. When it comes to being sexually abused by one parent, the child carries that with them for the rest of their lives. It is not okay to put a child back with a sexual abuser. That's what I'd like to say. I'd also like to say to them, please consider that there are good psychologists out there doing good work and presenting the courts with information that is clear and concise. Please do not ignore that information when you are making a decision. What would you look for? In ter looking for in terms of what? A, 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 a local clinical psychologist, somebody that can help. If you, if you put out the buzzword, uh, say, parental alienation, what are your thoughts about it? Oh, right. I would not use parent alienation in court. I won't use that term, especially in a psychological evaluation, because the, the courts don't really understand it themselves, and they're going to take it out of context. I suggest when you're looking for a psychologist to do an evaluation that they report the behaviors that you are seeing, that they report the emotional turmoil that you and your child are under, but that they do not write in their report about parent alienation because the courts don't really understand it and it's being taken out of context. What the courts need to know, and what I always write in my reports, is that if the child is being abused and I state it, and I state it 
in a way where I say that I have found this and I believe it. I'm not wishy-washy with what I report in my reports. Right. I am accurate, and if I believe it, I state it. Right. Because when you don't see what you're really finding, Kevin, it leaves so much room for the courts to make speculation about what's really happening. Right. And if it's not happening, and if it's a false allegation, then you can determine yep. that as well, uh, which is important. Uh, and, okay, and you've already mentioned your website. Did you mention? Yes, your... I did. Okay, and you have a book, and it's called. I do have a book, Kevin. Um, my book is called um, "The Ambiguous Foster Child," and you know that's where my passion all began is with helping foster children. So that's available on my um, website for okay. purchase. And I have a new book, Kevin, coming out in after the first of the year on building self-esteem in foster and adopted children. But I have a feeling that my next book okay. is going to be on, um, you know, helping parents um, with alienation and spiteful parenting and how to not put your child in the middle and be used as a pawn. Right. And one other thing, in our previous interview, you know, we talked about... Uh, how sometimes the abuser gets the child, and that abuser yeah. is the one who's actually doing the alienating, not necessarily sexually molesting the child, but emotionally right. traumatizing that mm -hmm. child uh, with untruths, uh, just falsehoods, or, or manipulation, like if you say hi to him, I'm going to punish you by being quiet uh, or, or taking right. something away, if, you know, stuff like that. And I used a, a specific word. They're almost sociopaths that, that yeah. do stuff like that. Well, I think, you know, um, being a clinical psychologist, I look at sociopaths as very manipulative, charming, mm -hmm. cunning people. And I think, you know, all sociopaths are not murderers. Right. But they can often make a person believe what they want them to believe. And I think it's very similar to that. If you are a parent that is trying to get back at your spouse because you're upset about divorce or cheating or whatever happened, and you are telling your child how terrible and how bad the other parent is, then you're manipulating that child's love right. for the other parent. And to me, that is just wrong. It may be hurting the ex, but it's also hurting the child. Exactly. And, I, and some, you know, it really is hurting the child more than anyone because that child has loyalty to both parents. Right. And I learned that very early on in my work with foster children who were separated from their biological parents. Even after they're adopted, Kevin, they still have loyalty to their biological parents as they should. So in the same thing with divorce, the child has loyalty to both parents and they don't want to hurt either parent. But when one parent is trying to get the child on their side, that is really putting a child in a very bad situation. We never want our children to have to choose between parents. Right, yeah. Well, I want to thank you very much for coming back on Speak Up, and uh, we hope to have you again, and maybe we can talk about another case or uh, what kind of progress you have or if there's some new resources out there. Uh, we'd, like to, yeah. uh, we'd like to know about them. Um, so I want to thank my guests for coming on, uh, watching Speak Up. If, if this information is helping you, please let us know. Uh, if you want to sponsor the show, we're, we welcome that. We uh, welcome people because it, it, it's with sponsors that we can help reach out across the country and make this stuff available to you. Um, it's important that, uh, that we do find some sponsors. And if you want to get in contact with uh, Dr. Kornbluth, uh, Kornbluth uh, just call me Dr. Sue. Dr. Sue. <laughs> get in touch with her. It's easy on Facebook, and, and she, she replies right away. She, and, and daily tips and all yeah. that. So, uh, so thank you for watching Speak Up. Uh, until next week, we'll see you. Thank you for watching this episode of Speak Up. We also want to thank our sponsor, Center for Redress of Grievances, LLC. You can reach them at www.centerforredress.com. If you want more information about Speak Up, 
or want to be a guest, you have something to say, contact us at speakupnh at gmail.com. And thanks for watching. Until next week. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandals and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up. It's directed at those who have fallen through the cracks, and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.